Nisara, Jasara, Global Reset explained. Could all of the debt in the world really be forgiven in a giant global reset? I'm a former investment professional who used to advise portfolio managers at Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley. And today I'm gonna to explain how a theory that proposes to do just that would work in practice. The theory is called NISARA, or the National Economic Security and Recovery Act, and it really had two stages of its formation into what it is today. First, there was an original version proposed in the 1990s by a private citizen, Harvey Francis Barnard. The proposal was essentially a set of radical economic reforms that included replacing the income tax with a national sales tax, getting rid of compound interest on secured loans, and returning to the gold standard. He said that would result in 0% inflation, higher living standards, and a more stable economy. For close to a decade, he tried to get his proposal in front of Congress, but he didn't work for the government and not many people took him seriously. So in the year 2000, he decided to use this new powerful tool to get the word out, the internet. That's where we get into the second phase of how it morphed into what it is today. Once it hit the internet, people like Shaney Goodwin, AKA the Dove of Oneness, who was part of a cult called the Ramtha School of Enlightenment, claimed that it was secretly passed by Congress and then suppressed by the government. By the way, Congress is the government. So how anyone believed that is beyond me. But I digress. They also claimed that it was a proposal to forgive all debt rather than just changing the way interest is calculated. And some people also made up a global version called Jasara that would forgive all global debt rather than just in the US. There are all kinds of offshoots of this, like that all currencies would then trade one for one and so forth and so on. A lot of these have been the basis for investment scams, including one that the Dove of Oneness was a part of called Omega Trust. So while the idea that it was secretly passed by Congress is a complete conspiracy theory and has no merit, we can still look at the real and fake proposals from an economic and investment perspective to see what their impact would be. So let's start with Bernard's original proposals to replace the income tax with a national sales tax, outlaw compound interest, and return to the gold standard. Well, some of these things have been tried in other places, and in general, I'd call them radical, but not completely crazy. The UAE, for example, does not have a personal income tax and generally has some of the lowest taxes in the world. However, vast oil wealth makes that somewhat of a unique situation that wouldn't be able to be repeated in most of the world. Earlier this year in the US, the Republicans actually had a similar proposal. They wanted to get rid of a bunch of taxes, including the income tax, and replace them with a 30% sales tax in the FAIR Act. But as far as I know, that didn't get anywhere. The reality is that it would lead to a lot more inequality and instability. The exact opposite of its intention. Income taxes are progressive. The more you make, the higher percentage of your income you have to pay. Sure, there are flaws and loopholes, but directionally, that's how it works. A sales tax is flat. Everyone pays the same. That would reduce the tax burden on the rich and increase it on the poor, while also reducing government revenues to pay for social programs. Not a very good idea. How about the gold standard? I've done an entire video on this already, so I won't repeat everything here, but the main point is that it's failed multiple times. It's a flawed policy, and there's a reason no country uses it anymore. Yes, no country uses the gold standard. A lot of people don't understand that. On the gold standard, you give up your flexibility to manage your monetary policy, which makes hyperinflation and great depressions much more likely in the event of something like, I don't know, a war or pandemic that requires a lot of government spending. Terrible idea, never ever gonna happen. So on the abolishment of compound interest, I think the idea there was that it's a lot harder to get out of debt when you have to pay interest on your interest. Eliminating the compounding of interest on certain debts would help with that. I think there's merit to that theory, but the reality is that the interest charged on credit card, mortgage, or any other debt is a calculated risk by the lender. If the interest didn't compound, interest rates would just go up so they could collect the same amount either way. There are some countries that don't allow any interest on debt since it's prohibited by Islamic law, but that usually works out one of two ways. Either no one has any access to any loans to grow their businesses, buy homes, or anything else without being politically connected and giving the government a say in what they do with the money, or the banks just get around the inability to charge interest in other ways. Sometimes they make up for it in higher fees, or sometimes they'll loan you $1,000 and and say, you owe us $1,100 on X date. One way or another, anyone who lends money and takes on the risk of not getting paid back is gonna wanna be compensated for that risk. If they're not, they won't do it. So what about the idea of the global reset where all debt is forgiven? Bernard, the guy who came up with Nassara, 
denounced this idea, by the way. All right, so this is pure conspiracy theory at this point, and here's why no sane person would ever consider it a realistic possibility. Debt is at the heart of almost every aspect of the global financial market. I know that sounds really unhealthy, but it's actually not. Let me give you a couple examples. One for governments and one for companies. If all debt were canceled, the social security system, which owns a ton of treasury bonds on behalf of Americans for their retirement, would go bust and send millions of retirees into poverty. Companies all around the world hedge their currency exposure through derivative products based on debt. For example, a swap contract would say something like, I'll pay you the return on a US treasury, you pay me the return on a German boon. I won't go too deep here since these products are complex and there's no reason for you to waste your mind space on them. But what you need to know is that the entire global financial system relies on versions of these to function normally. Canceling all debt, either in the US or globally, would not make people better off or create stability. It would cause a global depression unlike anything we've ever seen and thrust billions of people into poverty. Trust me, you don't want this and it's never gonna happen. So if you come across someone promising huge investment returns, when it does, my suggestion is that you run for the hills. Last thing here, I just launched a free currency course. It's actually 10 videos and will teach you how governments manipulate currencies, how to invest in currencies, how money's actually printed, and a lot more. If you wanna learn more about currencies, check out the link below in the description. And remember, it's free. Thanks for watching.